it's an honor to be honored to be here today as a anchor of this program i dr sumi faculty of education feel so privileged to extend a, a warm welcome to all the present here today for this celebration of teachers day 2023 before i begin uh, i would like to invite all our today's guest with a request to come over the stage and occupy the distinguished chair ji ji aise se raiye ji as we all know we gather here today with uh, hearts bringing brimming with the gratitude and admiration to celebrate the occasion that holds a special place in our hearts that is teachers day so teachers day is a tribute to all the selfless dedication of educators around the world so celebrating the birth anniversary of the renowned philosopher dr sarvepalli radhakrishnan it's a day we acknowledge the vital role teachers play in shaping our lives so let's begin the celebration with the recitation of the holy verses of quran for that i would like to call upon mr mohammad afan jalali dlet first semester student to the stage mohammad afan jalali dlet first semester student please السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سندخلهم جنات تجري من تحت جنات تجري من تحتها الانهار خالدين فيها ابدا وعد الله حقا ومن اصدق من الله قيلا ليس بامانيكم ولا اماني اهل الكتاب من يعمل سوءا يجزى به ولا يجد له من دون الله وليا ولا نصيرا ومن يعمل من الصالحات من ذكر او انثى وهو مؤمن وهو مؤمن فاولئك يدخلون الجنه ولا يظلمون نقيرا صدق الله العلي العظيم those who believe and do good deeds we shall admit them to the gardens beneath which rivers flow they shall live there forever it being a real promise from allah and who is more truthful than allah allah in his own word this is not the fancies of the people of the book whoever does evil shall be requited for it and he shall find neither a friend for himself besides allah nor a helper whoever male or female does good deeds and is a believer then such people enter in paradise and that and that and they shall not be required in the beast to allah belongs what is in the heavens and what is in the earth allah encompasses everything thank you and assalamu alaikum ji thank you so much afan for the knowledgeable verses now is the time for the official welcome i am so glad and proud to invite our pillar of strength of the department rather the school of education and training the mastermind and i would say the iron lady of the department professor vanaja m dean school of education and training for the welcome address please ma'am hi good morning everybody how i am i am i don't know i think i'm more of uh, butter and goodness i don't want to be called iron in that sense yes as a teacher it is nice to listen to students giving compliments like this and as we 
gather here today on this very, very rainy day. I appreciate that all of us have taken time to come out and celebrate our day. And the students who have come here to celebrate our day with you. So greetings to you all on Teacher's Day. On behalf of the School of Education and Training and the Department of Education and Training, I extend a hearty welcome to all of you today. My special welcome is to Professor B.J. Rao, the Vice Chancellor of University of Hyderabad, who has very readily consented to be here with us and uh, deliver his thoughts on education for all. Welcome, sir. I would like take great pleasure in welcoming our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Syed Ainul Hassan Saab, whom I would say a friend, guide, philosopher for all of us, and who is helping us in doing all our duties to the best of our abilities. Welcome, sir. It's now time to welcome our registrar, Professor Ishtiak Ahmad, sir, a person who is always helpful to us, very cheerful, and helping us do all our deeds in this university. Welcome, sir. OSD1, Professor Shagutta Shaheen, a very good friend of mine. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome back from your international trip. And on the teacher's day, it's nice to be seeing you back in the campus. My special welcome is to our senior professor in the department and School of Education and Training, Professor Siddiqui Mohammed Mahmood, sir. Welcome, sir. A special welcome to uh, Professor Ali Mashraf Jayasi Saab, the DSW, because today is the inaugural of the Diksha Ram along with the Teacher's Day. Welcome, sir. Welcome to my uh, fellow teacher in the department, Professor Shahin Sheikh, the HOD. I, will, I take this opportunity to welcome each of the teaching faculty and my colleagues who are here. Welcome and greetings on Teacher's Day, the research scholars and the students of this university. Today, uh, we are actually celebrating the Teacher's Day and it is celebrated in honor of uh, Dr. Sarvepalli Radhakrishnan, who was born on 5th September 1988. I'm sorry, 1888. Yeah, 1988 rings a bell because I was married in 1988. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dr. Sarve Pali Radhakrishnan was India's first vice president and second president. He was a great scholar, philosopher, and a Bharat Ratna. When Dr. Radhakrishnan took the office of the second president of India in 1962, and some of his students approached him to celebrate his birthday, then Dr. Radhakrishnan made a request to them to observe September 5th as Teacher's Day, and it is continuing even today. So as we celebrate Teacher's Day, I believe in this quotation that our parents gave us life, but it's our teachers who made us what we are today. And as I stand before you today, I'm just having a glimpse of all the teachers, especially those who trained me in my younger days, the CFTRI school in Mysore, the Mahajanas and the Maharani's college also in Mysore and the RIE Mysore. So I'm sure I'm indebted to each of those teachers who have made me a proud person standing in front of you. If I'm talking today, it is thanks to those teachers who have groomed me, who have molded me, and who have made my career to be what it is today. So I'm sure each of us is readily thinking of those teachers, and let's all bow down to each of them and just say a word of thank you if they are alive or at least keep them in our thoughts. So on this occasion, I welcome each of you all once again for this function. And now I request my colleagues who to help us fel felicitate our dignitaries on the dais. I request our Honorable Vice Chancellor to felicitate Professor B.J. Rao with the shawl and uh, And a sapling. Hope this sapling will build the bridges between HCU and Manu and uh, help us to develop good academic interactions, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I request our registrar, 
Professor Ishtiak Ahmad, sir, to felicitate our Honorable Vice Chancellor. Thank you, sir. Now I request Professor Siddiqui Mohammad Mahmood, our OSD, sir, to felicitate our registrar. <laughs> I now call upon our HOD, Dr. Shaheen Sheikh, to felicitate our OSD1, Professor Shaguta Shaheen. Shaheen, felicitations. I call upon Professor Mushahid to felicitate our, our OSD2, Professor Siddiqui Mohammed Mahmood. Uh, now I request our uh, Professor Siddiqui, sir, to felicitate our DSW, Professor Ali Mashraf Daisi, sir. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. So extend a warm welcome to you all once again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are the host, sir. So that's why. Right. Uh, our teacher's day is never complete with the participation of our dear uh, student. So here is Ms. Asma Firoz, PhD scholar, Department of Education Training uh, with the NASMA. So I request Ms. Asma to come over here and present the NASMA. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, may I request Professor Shahin Sheikh to please welcome our dean, esteemed dean, Professor Vanaya, Madam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kabile Sadr Ehtram Shaykhul Jamia Sahab. Aaj ke is khususi program ke khususi mehman, digar mehmana mehmana ne girami qad, asate zay kiram, zimedara ne jamia, aur karwaan e ilm ke ham safar saathiyo. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aaj ke yom e asate zay ke is pur saeed aur zaldi mauke ki munasibat se, Doctor Zakir. Zakir Hussain Khan Zakir ki ek tehreer karda nazm o memar e jahan tu hai ko mein tamam talba biradari ki taraf se tamam asatizai kiram ki khidmat mein batore nazran e khulus o wafa akidat o mohabbat ke pesh karna chahati hu mulaizah farmai Taafir dua tu hai tehreem e wafa tu hai تاثیر دعا تو ہے تحریم وفا تو ہے معمار جہاں تو ہے معمار جہاں تو ہے معمار جہاں تو ہے معمار جہاں تو ہے پر نور کتابوں کی تفسیر تیری آنکھیں 
پر کے وہ خیالوں کی تصویر تیری آنکھیں تخریب سے آ رہی تو تعمیر تیری آنکھیں تو علم کا منبع ہے تنویر تیری شمشیر خدا تو ہے باوا سے صفا تو ہے شمشیر خدا تو ہے باوا سے صفا تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمارے جہاں تو ہے قوموں کا ہے زیور تو میرا سے پیمبر تو قوموں کا ہے زیور تو میرا سے پیمبر تو مجبور کشہ پر تو اخلاق کا پہ کر تو تاروں کی صفت تجھ میں ظلمت میں ہے رہ بر تو تاروں کی صفت تجھ میں ظلمت میں ہے رہ بر تو ہر وادی تیرہ میں ایک نور کلش کر تو ہر وادی تیرہ میں ایک نور کلش کر تو مفلس کی ردا تو ہے مصروف دعا تو ہے مفلس کی ردا تو ہے مصروف دعا تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے گفتار تیری شیری کردار تیرا درپن گفتار تیری شیری کردار تیرا درپن ہر بات تیری میٹھی ایسار تیرا روشن طلبہ کی قیادت سے گلزار تیرا گن افکار کا دریا تو شہکار تیرا مامن دستار ہے قوموں کی ملت کا نشاہ تو ہے دستار ہے قوموں کی ملت کا نشاہ تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے میمار جہاں تو ہے ہر دور جہالت میں تو علم کا دائی ہے میراث پیمبر کی تو نے ہی سنبھالی ہے اب اتنا بھرم رکھنا یہ دور جو فانی ہے اب اتنا بھرم رکھنا یہ دور جو فانی ہے اس دور کی ہر وحشت تجھ کو ہی مٹانی ہے اس دور کی ہر وحشت تجھ کو ہی مٹانی ہے تو شم میں حرم بھی ہے ذاکر کی صدا تو ہے 
तो शम में हरम भी है फिर के सदा तू है मैं मारे जहाँ 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 तू है Thank you so much, Asma, for the beautiful nazm. Now I'm so glad to invite our respected professor, Professor Siddiqui Muhammad Mahmood Sir, OSD2, Maulana Azad National University, to give the Teachers Day greetings. Please, Sir, Professor Siddiqui Muhammad Mahmood Sir. Thank you, Dr. Sumi, for providing me the wonderful opportunity. Dais par maujood sadr nashine ilas. प्रोफेसर अनुल हसन साहब इज़्ज़त माफ शकुल जामिया मानू आज के मेहमान खसूस प्रोफेसर राव सर ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हैदराबाद इस स्कूल ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड ट्रेनिंग की डीन प्रोफेसर वनेजा मैडम एचओडी प्रोफेसर शगुफ्ता प्रोफेसर शाहीन मैडम ओ एस डी वन प्रोफेसर शगुफ्ता शाहीन मैडम हमारे रजिस्ट्रार प्रोफेसर इश्तिया अहमद साहब और डीन स्टूडेंट्स वेलफेयर प्रोफेसर अली मशरफ जायसी साहब यहाँ पर मौजूद सभी डीन्स एच ओ डीज डायरेक्टर्स तमाम इस्कॉलर्स और तलबा ये योम इस के मौके पर मुबारकबाद देने के लिए मैं खड़ा हुआ हूँ दस्ते मासूम को वो लोहे कलम देता है दस्ते मासूम को वो लोहे कलम देता है नौ नहालों को वो कंदील हरम देता है नौ नहालों को वो कंदील हरम देता है बाटता फिरता है वो रोशनी सूरज की तरह बाटता फिरता है वो रोशनी सूरज की तरह डूबता है तो सितारों को जन्म देता है मौसम आप देख रहे हैं ऐसे मौसम में अगर किसी की तबीयत मुतासर हो जाए तो बिल्कुल फितरी बात है मेरी तबीयत भी बहुत मुतासर थी लेकिन आज सुबह दो वाक़ात ऐसे हुए कि मैं एकदम तरोताज़ा हो गया सुबह तकरीबन साढ़े आठ बजे मुझे एक फ़ोन आता है मैं रिसीव नहीं कर पाता हूँ दोबारा मैं कॉल बैक करता हूँ मैंने पूछा कौन कहा कि मैं सोदा उस्मानी जम्मू से आपकी शागिर्द पहचाना आपने मैंने बहुत गौर किया लेकिन मैं पहचान नहीं पाया रिकलेक्ट नहीं कर पाया इसलिए कि 1982-83 में मैंने उस लड़की को पढ़ाया था उसने हैप्पी टीचर्स डे कहा और उस कहा कि सर रात भर मुझे पता नहीं था कि टीचर्स डे है ये सब मुझे कुछ पता नहीं था लेकिन रात भर आप मेरे ख्वाब में मुसलसिल एक नज्म पढ़ाते रहे थे ए बादलो ए बादलो आए हो किस देश से लाए हो क्या प्रदेश से रात भर वो जो आपने एटी टू में पढ़ाया था वो ख्वाब में मैं देखती रही और जब सुबह में कैलेंडर देखा तो मुझे याद आया कि अरे आज तो टीचर्स डे है मुझे आपको विश करनी है फिर मैंने इसलिए फ़ोन किया फिर दूसरा एक मैसेज मुझे मिला कि मैं सचिन कासलीवाल आपसे बात करना चाहता हूँ मैंने कहा कि ठीक है कॉल कीजिए फिर कॉल आया सर जो मैथमेटिक्स आपने स्कूल में हमको पढ़ाई थी तकरीबन यही एटी फोर में तो वो मैथमेटिक्स मुझे आज भी बिजनेस में कनेक्ट किए हुए हैं मैं बिजनेस से कनेक्टेड हूं और उससे मुझे बहुत फायदा पहुंचता है मैं गौर कर रहा था कि ये मेरे लिए ऑनर है या एक तरीके से लम्हे एहतसाब है कि क्या मैं सभी तलबा को ऐसा मुतासर कर पाया जैसे इन दो तलबा ने मैसेज तो बहुत सारे हैं लेकिन इन दो तलबा ने जो फीडबैक दिया जो इतना गैर मामूली फीडबैक है मुझे सोचने के लिए मजबूर कर रहा है कि टीचर्स के असरा कैसे देर पा होते हैं बस उस तरह सा उस तरह का असर पैदा करने के लिए अपनी शख्सियत में अपने इल्म में अपने तजर्बात में और अपने तलबा के साथ डीलिंग में अपने आप में वो तब्दीली पैदा करना पड़ेगी तो तालब इल बिल्कुल तैयार है कि जिस तरीके से आप चाहें उसकी तख्ती पर आप अपना पैगाम लिख सकते हैं सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि क्या हम सिर्फ अपने सब्जेक्ट की नॉलेज दे रहे हैं या उसके साथ पैगाम मोहब्बत भी दे रहे हैं क्या हम सिर्फ पढ़ा रहे हैं या उसके साथ ज़िंदगी का दर्ज भी दे रहे हैं क्या हम सिर्फ तदरीस कर रहे हैं और इम्तहान के लिए तैयारी कर रहे तैयारी करवा रहे हैं 
या फिर जिंदगी के इम्तिहान के लिए भी उसे तैयार कर रहे हैं मैं समझता हूँ कि यहाँ पर मौजूद तमाम इस सवाल पर जरूर गौर करेंगे अगर हमने ऐसा गौर किया तो मैं समझता हूँ कि टीचर्स डे का इससे बेहतर कोई मैसेज नहीं हो सकता बहुत शुक्रिया जजाकल्ला जी थैंक यू सो मच सर एंड विश टीचर्स ऑल्सो विश द सेम एज द स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो रिमेंबर एज एज ऑन टीचर्स डे एंड ऑल द अदर ओकेशन नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर शगुफ्ता शाहीन ऑयस डी वन मौलाना सर नेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी टू ऑफर ग्रीटिंग्स ऑन टीचर्स डे Good morning, Assalamualaikum, members on the dais, and my dear friends. A very happy Teachers' Day to all of you. As I was listening to the nazm and the uh, greetings given by Professor Siddiqui Mahmood, you know it is normal to feel happy and flattered when such praise are being given and bestowed on the teacher. But then there is also the danger of, you know, especially for psychophants. to be driven away by immodesty and lose their sense of balance so we have to be very cautious as teachers and i would also like to draw your attention to the changing equations between teachers from the past we have examples of dronacharya and arjun we have the relation teacher student relationship between socrates and plato plato and aristotle Aristotle and Alexander the Great. We also have the example of Aurangzeb and the letter that he writes to his teacher. So, from from these various examples, we tend to delve on the changing equation that is there between teacher and student. Because I am sure no teacher would want that kind of unequivocal devotion from their students. As teachers, we have become facilitators. i'm sure no good teacher would like a student to become an echo of their own any good teacher would like to develop critical analytical and individualistic individualistic thought in the students so i wish you all to think on these lines and contemplate as to how we we can evolve and develop and become good teachers and i also would like to end a uh, uh, from a line of of uh, dun in canonization we says uh, in death we rise so as teachers i think like the phoenix bird we, we from the ashes of the students of the teachers knowledge that we give to our students we give birth to a new phoenix a new bird rises from the ashes of the teacher so in death we rise is i think is an apt quotation from uh, dun which applies to all teachers thank you thank you ma'am for the insightful and thought provoking greetings on the occasion of teachers day now i would i would like to request our registrar sir professor ishtiaq ahmed sir for the teachers day greetings professor ishtiaq ahmed sir thank you very much first of all on this great day a special day i congratulate all of you all teachers and also our students who have assembled to celebrate this day with us i especially congratulate our new teachers as all of us are aware that a good number of teachers have joined in the past 8 or 9 months some of them are smiling also and they are accepting our greetings it's good that all of you have joined manu and you are part of manu fraternity it's a important day why because students along with teachers have assembled to celebrate this day our students are sending greetings through whatsapp and messages since morning and uh, you know as teacher we we are also sending greetings to one another morning i shared greetings with many of our colleagues from jawarlal nehru university and 
many of our colleagues from different other university, including Maulana Azad National Urdu University. On this day, we also remember our parents who happened to be our first teacher, our gratitude to them. And uh, for me, again, it's a special day that we are sharing the dice of two great personalities, Professor Sayyid Anul Hassan Sahib and Professor Rao Sahib. Today, they are before us as vice chancellor of two central university, two important center of learning, but they are originally a teacher. So my best wishes and greetings to both of you, sir. Professor Anul Hassan Sahib, as you know that he is vice chancellor of our university, but he is a renowned teacher, a very well respected teacher of the Jawaharlal Nehru University. In JNU, you know, these days are hardly celebrated. I mean, these are new phenomena that now students have started celebrating. But as a teacher, you know, few teachers we have seen in our life that they have really very, very remarkable imprints on our mind. And no doubt, Professor Anu Lessons Saib is one among them. Please give a big welcome to him. And for me, again, it was a very uh, happy moment that as per the program, which I was not aware that I was met to welcome sir first time in Manu since I have joined as registrar. So thank you very much. And uh, my all uh, best wishes to you, sir. May God give you best of health and opportunity to serve this institution in the better way. Similarly, Professor Rao Saheb is very, very dear to us. I don't know why. Rao Saheb is a very, very sweet person, I must say. I have hardly seen, you know, Vice Chancellor like Rao Saheb. In Delhi, during uh, Siksha Samagam, I had the opportunity to spend two days with, you know, day long session with the Rao Sahib. And there we, where, there I reinvented Rao Sahib. He is a very nice person, full of ideas. And his guidance is very important, especially for teachers or administrators like us. You know, when Professor Vanaja, uh, uh, Madam, was discussing about, you know, celebrating this day. She had a number of names who can be invited for this occasion. When we saw the name of Professor Rao Sahib, you know, we came, I mean, that was our, the first choice in the sense that we will try with Professor Rao Sahib if Rao Sahib is free. We discussed with the Vice Chancellor Sahib and uh, luckily Vice Chancellor Sahib said that tomorrow Rao Sahib is coming as because we were not aware some selection committee was going on. So Rao Sahib was also uh, was about to join. So we requested Rao Sahib and Rao Sahib, though he is very busy today, I must tell you because it, he belongs to Hyderabad Central University. There are various programs going on there also. But he said, Ke main ek ghanta zarur nikalunga, and I would like to join you all on this day. So thank you very much, sir, that you joined despite heavy rain. We were very doubtful whether this doubtful that whether this program will happen or not. But thanks God, uh, a good number of students and teachers have joined and more will join. So, sir, thank you very much. You spare time and uh, he has given a very important topic, education for all. And we will be very happy. And I know that he will share some important points and he will guide us on this topic. Thank you very much. Once again, I, I give, I send my greetings and welcome you all on this occasion, all my students and teachers and our fellow. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Now it's a time to hear from our Dean Student Welfare, Professor Ali Mashraf Jassi, sir. Uh, on uh, uh, Teacher's Day greetings and about the introduction of the Sharam program. Sir, Professor Ali Mashraf Jaisi, sir. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Izzat Ma'ab Vice Chancellor, Professor Sayyid Anul Hassan Sahab, 
مہمان گرامی پروفیسر راؤ صاحب ڈائس پر تشریف فرما یونیورسٹی کے تمام ذمہ داران اساتذہ ساتھی رفقا عزیز طلبہ اور طالبات یوم اساتذہ کی پرخلوص مبارکباد قبول کریں میں مبارکباد دینا چاہوں گا پروفیسر ونیجا میم کو جنہوں نے پانی کی بارش کرنے والے بادلوں اور علم کی بارش کرنے والے اساتذہ کو اکٹھا کر دیا ہے اور بلا شبہ میں آپ کو ایک بہت ہی ایتھینٹک حدیث جو ٹریڈیشن ہے کہ مولب کائنات جناب محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا ان نما بعیس تو معلمہ کہ آئی ہیو بین سینٹ ایز اے ٹیچر تو اس کے ساتھ میں آپ سب کو یوم اساتذہ کی مبارکباد دینا چاہتا ہوں مجھے تین منٹ کا ٹائم دیا گیا ہے جس میں ایس آئی پی کا انٹروڈکشن کرنا ہے جس میں بائیس پروگرام کرنے ہیں تو میں ان سارے پروگراموں کا نام بھی نہیں لے پاؤں گا آج دوپہر بعد ہی ایس آئی پی کا جو یو جی سی کی گائیڈ لائنس کے مطابق ہے اور نئے بچوں کی شمولیتی اور انڈکشن کا پروگرام ہے دوپہر بعد شروع ہو گئے انوگرل ہے اور اس کے بعد آئندہ چھ دنوں تک یہ پروگرام کانسیکوینٹلی چلتا رہے گا اور جس میں اسپورٹس کی ایکٹیویٹی ہے کلچرل ایکٹیویٹی ہے کیریئر گائیڈنس کے لیکچرز ہیں یونیورسٹی کا جو ہے ایک کمپرہنسیو انٹروڈکشن ہے اور بہت سارے ہمارے ریسورس پرسن بھی آئیں گے جس میں طلبہ کو اس یونیورسٹی سے متعارف کرا جائے گا اور ہم نئے طلبہ سے متعارف ہوں گے بہت ساری اوپن مائک کا پروگرام ہے فلم کی اسکریننگ کی جائے گی طلبہ کے لیے بہت ساری کلچرل ایکٹیویٹی کی جائے گی میں اپنے اساتذہ سے بھی خواہش کرتا ہوں کہ وہ طلبہ کو تیار کریں گی ان پروگراموں میں شرکت کریں پچھلے سال ایڈمیشن لینے والے طلبہ میں سے بہت ساری طالب علم جو ہے انڈکشن پروگرام میں شریک نہیں ہو سکے تھے ان کے لیے بھی یہ انڈکشن پروگرام بے حد مفید ہوگا اور یہ انڈکشن پروگرام آئندہ سنڈے تک چلتا رہے گا اور اسپورٹس ایکٹیویٹی پر اس کا جو ہے خاتمہ ہوگا میں طلبہ سے بھی گزارش کروں گا کہ جو آپ کے نئے ساتھی جو اب تک آ چکے ہیں وہ اور آپ سب ان تمام پروگراموں میں شرکت کیجئے ان پروگراموں کے ذریعے آپ وہ کچھ حاصل کر سکیں گے جو کلاس ایجوکیشن میں حاصل کرنے میں آپ کو مہینوں لگ سکتے ہیں لہذا آپ سب ضرور شرکت کیجئے اور اسی کے ساتھ میں پروفیسر ونیجا میم اور ان کی پوری ٹیم کو مبارکباد دیتا ہوں کہ ان حالات میں انہوں نے یوم اساتذہ کا انعقاد کر کے یہ ثابت کر دیا کہ حالات کیسے بھی اچھے یا برے ہوں اساتذہ کی ہمت اور اساتذہ کے جو ہے ولولے کے سامنے تمام حالات کو جو ہے موافق کیا جا سکتا ہے بہت بہت شکریہ جی تھینک یو سر اینڈ ناؤ ٹوڈے وی ہیو دا پرویلیج آف ہوسٹنگ پروفیسر بی جے راؤ سر وائس چانسلر یونیورسٹی آف حیدرآباد as you all know a renowned scientist and an academician at the same time has achieved great success in his field and significantly contributed to the community and the society so to hear more about our chief guest i would request dr akhtar parveen faculty of education to give a brief introduction of our chief guest professor bj rao sir dr akhtar parveen faculty of education Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everybody. I, Dr. Akhtar Parveen, am profoundly delighted to take an opportunity to introduce the chief guest of the day, Professor Basutkar Jagadishwar Rao, sir, the Vice Chancellor of University of Hyderabad, Telangana. Professor B.J. Rao is a senior professor, chair of biology, dean faculty at the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. He has taken charge as the Vice Chancellor of the University of Hyderabad on 26th July 2021. Prior to the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research posting, Professor B.J. Rao was Senior Professor in Chair Biology for several years at Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai, and successfully headed the program of Mechanism of Genome Dynamics and Cellular Adaptation Laboratory at TIFR. His areas of specializations are Molecular Basis of Genome Dynamics, Computational Biology of Genomes and Protein Active Sites, Cellular Physiology and Metabolism, fields in which he has made fundamental contributions. 
apart from his research in the domain of biology, he is also interested in dissemination of scientific knowledge and outreach activities. Uh, to sir, to his credit, 130 publications with 1,371 citations. Professor Rao, born on March 13, 1956, awarded National Science Talent Award by NCRT with 16th rank in India. First in AP, graduated with BSc from Nizam College and an MSc from Usmania University, Hyderabad, winning university gold medals in both. He then obtained his PhD from Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore, in the domain of biochemistry. And he then went on to his postdoctoral work at Yale Medical School, serving as a research scientist for seven years. On his return India to India, he worked at TFIR for several years. BJ Rao is a fellow of all the three national academies in India and the Sir J.C. Bose Fellow of the Department of Science and Technology, India. He is a chief member and an advisor of various committees, and he has won many awards and fellowships. He is the chief editor of Journal of Biosciences, a flagship journal of Indian Academy of Sciences and Springer Nature combined. He has worked as a DST-inspired teacher, articulating the current excitements of basic biology to undergraduate students across India. He perceives biology as a complex manifestation of physics chemistry of a dynamically evolving system and emphasizes the design principles in biology. He has derived numerous technical, sorry, he has delivered numerous technical and public lectures for varied, various audiences. And reaching young minds has been his passion, which he is now doing at Agatsya Foundation Kupam. Sir, we are honored and privileged to have you here and eager to listen to a man who had made remarkable contribution in science, especially in the field of molecular basis of genome dynamics. So we welcome wholeheartedly, sir. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. This is my second home in the city. And Professor Ainul Hassan is my very, very good friend, a bosom friend, I would say. So I feel completely at home coming here. And the first opportunity I got about today's proceedings, I grabbed it. I grabbed it with passion. And I'm here I am. I want to thank uh, Hassan Sahab, Vice Chancellor of this great university, and the Registrar Sahab for facilitating this, and all eminent officers sitting on the dais, Vanajagaru, who is the who is the man behind, the women behind this whole proceedings. So I am, I am thankful to all of you on the stage, off the stage. And I want to give me adab, my adab to all my students here. <laughs> this is Teacher's Day. And the topic I spontaneously chose was education for all. Education must be for all, obviously. Because education is a way of liberating ourselves. Education is not simply a, a tool for learning XYZ and gaining a piece of degree and acquiring certain ABCD skills and getting some XYZ jobs. By putting the education in this particular box, we have actually denigrated education. Over centuries, we have used education as a tool in universities, in institutes, in schools and colleges, 
we have used education only as a tool t o o l and come to think of it education is not just a tool it is a tool of course but it is not just a tool it is a way to liberate ourselves it is a way to connect ourselves with ourselves deeply and to connect with the with everything that is around us truly that is the education and when i say so that education is a way to enlighten ourselves in the true sense i mean that education is a way of thinking is a way of is a way of reforming ourselves is a way of appreciating the beauty of this flower is a way of appreciating the sensitivity of a young child is a way of appreciating the needs of a, an elderly lady is a way of appreciating the whole creation if we obtain this sense of appreciation in us and around us through what is called education i think education will serve the purpose all other things will simply follow it now look at this whole creation as a construct if you look at this whole construct you will see there are there are too many things happening in this construct there is cosmos there are galaxies there are solar systems there are planets there are all kinds of things getting birth and there are all kinds of things dying it's a cyclic dynamic process and in this cyclic dynamic process we are a small drop in the ocean we meaning the we we the we the human beings we are the most recent entrants in the drama of life we just came here only about maybe a million year ago million years ago the whole creation is several billions of years ago happened so we are actually very tiny dust in this whole creation but remarkably this small tiny dust has created a wealth of knowledge that can allow us to understand the whole cosmos imagine this this is a very interesting design you as a small particle in this whole ocean are capable of understanding the entire thing i think that's the most powerful thing that has happened to hum humanity that human being is able to understand is able to ask questions is able to investigate is able to probe everything around him and her and is able to even get insights we are able to calculate when the universe actually took birth within the accuracy of few seconds we are able to project how long this universe would last we are able to discover the most fundamental aspects of this universe called quantum world we are able to discover most abstract mathematics through which we can compute things which are so accurate that you can see the moon landing within seconds precision space landing on the moon imagine the power of this human analysis and mind and we are just insignificantly small in this creation this is the most beautifully beautiful anomaly most beautiful anomaly this is the gunge ka gud it is so beautiful you are insignificant but you are significantly able to understand this whole creation and the way we have done is through what is called understanding through what is called education we have done it within the classrooms and we have largely done very good quality education outside the classrooms gautam buddha never went to school mahatma gandhi was a bad student albert einstein was a fail in the class michael faraday never saw good classes but they discovered new things that we 
actually now follow as very important models. So many important things in education happen outside the classroom. Please remember. Within the classroom, we get the exposure to the template called education. Just a template. The teacher tells you what you should learn, what you should not learn, how you should learn, the do's and don'ts. Just a template. Recipe in some sense. But ultimately, the learning is do-it-yourself exercise. You have to do it yourself. And when you do the exercise yourself, you get that aha moment. Yeah, I have understood now. That moment only you can get it. Teacher cannot give you that. So the most beautiful part of education that we are all going through in the university system, in any institute, is that the teacher will simply tell you, I think this is the way to go about it. And this is what you have to learn. The teacher will never tell you how you should learn. You have to do it yourself. And this is the best kept, best kept secret in education. That teacher will never tell you how you should learn. May or may not tell, may or may not work. But it is you who have to learn, unlearn. Unlearning is part of learning. Please realize it. Relearn. No learning process is static. That you have learned today and that is it. No, sorry. You have to unlearn that tomorrow. Process of education, process of learning is extremely dynamic. Same thing you learn today, tomorrow you learn it differently. You take a classic book, you read today, certain things hit you. Come back tomorrow, same things will hit you differently. Day after it will hit you so hard that you said, this must be understood in a particular manner. So certain things will keep hitting you all the time. And that process of hitting is what is called learning. And that is what makes you educated. And when you educate yourself, when you learn yourself, learn to meditate about, meditate about it. Just don't simply learn it. You meditate about it. Chintan manan. This is very important. Internalize the concept. Never do anything rote learning. It is not worth anything. No rote learning. Learning and rote learning do not go together. Learning is internalization of a process whereby that internalization is not irreversible. It, is, it should be reversible. Whatever you have learned today should come out tomorrow and something else will come in. So therefore, the process of learning is an extremely beautiful process. You can't even describe it well. Especially when you learn deeper concepts. In poetry, in astronomy, in linguistics, in literature, in quantum mechanics, in the history of language processes. In general, in every activity, when you do deep learning, you not only get educated, but you become much more philosophical about what you are learning. You, you get to learn the real essence of learning. Things become interconnected when you learn. You may learn a language today, but you may learn something else tomorrow and you see the connections. Ultimately, connecting the dots of knowledge is education. You need to be able to connect the dots. You need to be able to contextualize it. Education learning is never a dry process. It is a process whereby you contextualize yourself in the society, in the world, in wherever you are living, so that you become part of it. Don't divorce education from your own existence. It doesn't work like that. 
it has to contextualize you in your own life in your own situation in your own society in your own country in the world that you live in and when you do that you realize that the so called division of social sciences humanities hard sciences engineering etc etc are very very artificial very very artificial they are, they are done simply for the sake of convenience to give away degrees in this versus that because at the level of mind process everything is interconnected you appreciate the beauty of nature you write poetry when you write poetry you see patterns you compare you compare god with a blooming flower you compare symbolism comes in from some symbolism comes in questions how did i compare this why did i compare god with fragrance why did i compare god with light certain questions come in your mind and when questions come in analysis begins and sciences get birth that's how human mind works it's by diffusion and when sciences happen when sciences mature obviously applications have to come in engineering happens because you want to apply every bit every bit of knowledge that you have learned medicine happens engineering happens space crafts happen nuclear energy happens extraterrestrial life happens this is all technology and when technology happens the mind at some point should become numb you become too much drawn into technology artificial intelligence etc then you become numb and you ask yourself where am i going and again poetry begins philosophy begins humanity social sciences come in so it's a cyclic process of a human mind that in that journey many many streams of knowledge come out which we have categorized as hard sciences social sciences humanities poetry this that and all that's all convenience but when you get truly educated you need to have a bearing in everything so therefore in the current context of national education policy there is a heavy emphasis on multidisciplinarity keep your the base of your learning very broad don't specialize too much too early keep your base very broad so that at the end of the day you should be able to appreciate many things in life then then the life becomes so much more beautiful than becoming very narrow don't wear blinkers very early on so when you start your education that way in a very multidisciplinary manner you can you can learn music you can learn sciences you can also learn poetry you can learn many beautiful things that you are attracted to and you then you do deep learning because you are you are learning what you like learning not what what your parents have told not what your elders have told you learn what you want to learn as many new things as possible and that's how deep learning begins because you like learning those so so you start you start seeing many dots getting connected in your early process of learning and then learning when it is deep it has to become a skill you have learned it so deep you have learned programming so deep you will be able to program yourself do very good programming because you have learned it you have not simply read it so deep learning becomes skill and it is so deep that you are not only skilled but you can even explain to others how you have done it you can you can articulate it so clearly that others also can appreciate it and learn if you cannot explain to a young child what you have learned you know, that means you have not learned you should be able to explain what you have learned to any simple child in simple language you should be able to explain and that happens only when you deep learning 
because there is, there is no confusion there in the head. There is a total clarity of how things happen. How things happen is a very important concept. The mechanism of things happening, not just things happening, but how they happen, why they happen. Why don't they happen some other way? So if this process is inculcated in your, in your educational systems, then I think you do what is called deep learning. And deep learning gives you deep joy of learning. First benefit of learning is joy. And that is what I tell my students. You are learning, so you must be very happy about what you are learning. Derive joy out of your learning because that is your strength. Once you learn deeply, once you understand the concept very deeply, then you cannot, there is nothing called forgetting it. You have understood, you are able to assimilate it, get the essence out of it, then there is no forgetting about it. And it becomes so deep that you can build on that on your own. And the deep learning will make you a discoverer also. You can discover new things. And in the process, of course, you are very skilled. You are able to contribute. You become very productive. You acquire degrees. And many people invite you to, jo to join them. All those things will happen because of deep learning. So in all your processes of learning, education, please give emphasis to deep learning. This is very important. Not, don't simply browse. Don't simply skim through. Don't simply go through cursorily. Anything that you are learning, learn it deeply. Go to the fundamentals of it. So most of what I'm telling is meant for students. Okay, I'm trying to connect with the students so that in whichever area they want to go far, they must develop this habit of deep learning. And you know, there are multiple ways of doing deep learning. It's you have to discover which way works for you. Now, I, I told so many things about what is education, what is learning, and what is multidisciplinarity, and how it would empower you. This would lead to obviously degrees and skills and jobs and lots of things. But when you are doing all this, there must be a bigger purpose of what you are doing. You know, whatever you do in your life should have a bigger purpose. There are two things. There is a simple purpose. You are in a university, you get a degree, this, that and all that. But there should all be also be a bigger purpose. That generally we don't discuss. The bigger purpose of education. You may not discuss with your parents also. You may not discuss with your teacher. But you should have a bigger purpose deep inside you that you must be aiming for. And what could that deep purpose be? Deeper purpose be? Larger purpose be? That larger purpose is much more important than getting a degree, getting a job, leading a very cushy, higher earning life, this, that, and that is a much bigger uh, process and that's a much, much uh, important, much more important goal for all of us. It is in that sense, a human being differs from all other creatures. There are so many creatures in this world, so many living beings. It is the only it is the human being who wants to connect with something bigger, something bigger than oneself. No other creature has that ability. And we are the most blessed ones. <coughs> this, I think, is the most important <coughs> takeaway from so-called education. I started my lecture in that tone and I'm coming back to that tone. Each one has to ask that question, what is my bigger purpose of life? Each one has to ask. Whether you like it or not, you have to ask this question. Whether your teacher, your parents tell you or not, you have to ask this question. 
to me that is the most beautiful question that you have asked all others are mundane questions and that question is your question and only you can answer that and you can answer that only in total solitude not by discussing with others you have to go in an empty room sit quietly ask yourself what is the larger purpose of your life can i do education to answer that larger purpose you may get an answer you may not get an answer but asking that question is the important question is an important part of your life people who have become thought leaders and have become trend setters in this society have got some answer to that and that's how they are where they are mahatma gandhi asked that question himself and he got the answer that non violence and truth are the bigger purpose of my life Gautam Buddha asked that question and he got the answers which we call now as philosophy of Gautam Buddha each of us have to ask that question the true purpose of education is to provoke you asking that question and the sooner you ask that question the better it is you you don't find this anywhere it written any books nobody will tell you but i am telling you i think this is this is how i think it i think about education whether people agree with you or not but this is the true purpose of education to ask to find out the larger purpose of life just because you have asked that question so many ideas open up in your mind and many times you ask questions not because you want to get an answer you ask questions because you want to open up a direction getting an answer is not the purpose of a question but discovering some ways is the purpose of that question beauty is something that you don't achieve it beauty is something that you appreciate from a distance and that distance keeps on increasing as you appreciate more and more beauty is not something that you grab it so it is one of those questions you don't grab the answer you become hungry for finding out something about it that hunger is important so i have said certain things which in some sense will touch you in some other sense will provoke you into thinking and in some other sense may even perplex you you may not follow it in some areas don't worry about it just keep thinking about it just thinking about what i said also is very useful my purpose is to not convey exactly what i have in my mind my purpose purpose is to just simply open up your neurons because when your neurons open up your thinking begins and you may have other ideas maybe very different from mine doesn't matter live in the world of ideas not in the world of content ideas are so important every day you must think of new things and think of newer ways of addressing new things etc etc ideas is very important now if you look at if you look at this design very influential people have told in this design where 1000 people are sitting one or two people get ideas which are paradigm shifting out of 1000 people you just need few people to do the paradigm shifting 
And for that one or two people, you have to take entire thousand population because it's a distribution that works. You can't work in a targeted manner. When I teach thousand students, I am hoping that there is one C.V. Raman sitting somewhere. I don't know. I hope there is one C.V. Raman sitting somewhere. He will pick it up and move on. My purpose is to ensure that that hidden C.V. Raman goes through. Because we live in a distribution, we live in a system. Individuals come and go, doesn't matter. So therefore, in this whole gathering, when I say certain things, I think one or two people get triggered. And they move on and change the paradigm. It's always like that. And we must ensure that the distribution is preserved. Everybody is handheld. But don't expect everybody will make it. System is never designed like that. System is designed only for few people making big things happen anywhere. But entire system has to work for it. And we are part of that. And the backbencher as well as the front bencher, everybody has to be taken along. There are slow learners, very slow learners, fast learners, very fast learners. As a teacher, I have to take everybody along. But if I'm making sense to some special students who pick it up and move on, purpose is ultimately that. Whereas everybody is moving on with it. Finally, I will sum up what I just told now in the form of a story. This is a real story and this the take home of this real story is very dear to my heart. And I have told this story in many other gatherings also. This is the story that happened in Italy some 200 years ago. You might have heard of a name called Michelangelo. The famous sculptor in the Renaissance period. And during that period, many, many creative artists came along, along with Michelangelo. When Michelangelo started chiseling a marble, he had something in his mind. He was a, he's a sculptor, obviously, he has to chisel ma marble. He started chiseling a marble. This is a real story. And lots of other very renowned sculptors were around him. Remember, Michelangelo is a product of an ecosystem. You need to create that ecosystem of creative minds and Michelangelo happens. So Michelangelo was surrounded by a lot of other creative artists. A lot of other sculptors of very high fame. They came and challenged him. You are wasting your time on this defective marble. Why are you chiseling this defective marble? Marbles are defective sometimes. You and me may not know. But a sculptor will know that there is a defective marble and defective marbles cannot be chiseled. So a lot of these high profile sculptors came and sort of criticized Michelangelo for chiseling, starting to chisel a defective marble. There are so many defective marbles, right, in the society. But Michelangelo was, was undeterred. He kept on chiseling a defective marble. Defective because a lot of people proclaim that marble is defective. When a lot of people proclaim, it becomes a norm in the society. So that was a defective marble. Michelangelo kept chiseling. And one fine day came out David out of it. You know the David, statue David. Then all the other high profile sculptors who were criticizing the marble were aghast. They asked him, how did you do it? Michelangelo gave a simple answer. You all saw the defect in the marble, but I saw the David in him. I saw the David in the marble. 
When I see the David, I have to go after it. So when you see the David in defective marbles in the country, go after it. And your education must serve you that purpose. There will be a lot of defects all over, everywhere, in Bharat and outside Bharat. But if you see the David in the defect, go for it. Kainath will support you. Because ultimately your life is a dialogue between you and your Kainath, ultimately. Every, everybody else is a bystander. Your life is between you and your Lord. A conversation, a very decent conversation. Sometimes turbulent conversation also. It's a nevertheless a conversation that you set up with your God. And that is life. And if education is helping you in that conversation, I think it has served its purpose. And that is what Michelangelo did. He did the conversation with the defective marble using his inner intuition. When you have your inner intuition, everything will fall in line. Because that's how the design is. The design can only be this way. This realization is important through what is called education. And if you are able to discover the David in a defective marble, go for it and show it, people will be aghast. Doesn't matter. Because that's people's reaction. It's between you and your Lord, your God. So keep it that way. It's a very simple model. There's no confusion here at all. It's a silent conversation between you and your God. And everything else is a process. And education is one way of helping that process. Believe me, this is the truth. I think this is a very beautiful truth. And if we, if we, if we believe in this, I think many, many beautiful things will happen in you and around you. All others are technical details. Curriculum, you know, credits, degrees, jobs, these are all technical details, fine print. But the real print is you and your Lord, your thinking. Make that connect through what is called education. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you, sir. It's really worth hearing you, sir. And as we are teachers, we are we know that we are teaching the Generation Z students, and they are talking about the uh, they are using the artificial intelligence or the uh, Chat GPT. We teachers, the role of teachers is getting diluted or dissolved. So we must learn, unlearn and relearn and we try to find the bigger purpose sir, as you are talking about and we will find our david thank you sir thank you so much i am extremely overwhelmed to take this opportunity to welcome our honorable vice chancellor professor syed ainul hassan sir to deliver the presidential address on this occasion of teachers day celebration 2020 Dignitaries, friends, colleagues, girls, and boys. As you know, that he is having such a power to mesmerize everyone. And he has mesmerized me to surround, really, starting from. kind of process of learning and sense of appreciation that one must keep alive. 
And then I don't know, but his journey, you see, <coughs> from inferior degree to, to the superior degree, that, and his connect, where, you know, he talks about introspection also. Keep questioning. That is the crux of the matter. Very well. You question, you see. And therefore, you see, I see a mystic also in him. That is this, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the, the baseline of a mistake where, you know, you have to do self-introspection. Keep on doing it, asking questions. And then finally, the larger purpose, that is ultimately the goal which you achieve, whether you realize or you don't realize. Starting from Mantikuttar, you know, Attar, you know, and he says, look, conference of birds. All birds, they start a journey crossing seven valleys, sitting in the chamber lane of Seymour, waiting for the arrival of Seymour. But they realize there are 30 birds. And then these 30 birds only, as you said, the entire thousand birds may not be there. You know, many of them will disappear, but 30 birds. And then they are realizing 13 birds mean C. C means 30, more means bird. So we are the 30 birds. We are C more. Now, this is how you see you can take the entire caravan to the ultimate end. And so, uh, Rao sir, I think we have to add one more uh, title to your entire career. That is, you see, a mystic is sitting uh, in our midst. And look at Khayyam also said, okay, don't claim that you are so big, you have you have gained knowledge, you see. Know where you should claim because it's a learning process and you have to complete this chain. You have to complete this process. Khayyam said, we claim that, well, we have attained attainment of knowledge. We have become Ustad. But in reality, ultimately, when there is a call, then you are nowhere. You become a, a dust particle. Nothing more than that. So this is how you see, I think, we all of us have enjoyed Saropalli Radha Krishna, who was 1888. He, he was born in Madras, I think. And then he, he died in 1975. He was Vice Chancellor of Brass Hindu University also. He's, he's still, see, Professor Shakil is here. One can see his footprints in Brass Hindu University, in fact, when my father was also. Yeah, but he joined after Radha Krishna and left as Vice Chancellor. So look at this in a teacher like Radha Krishna. And then I, I recall is the another teacher, Vishnu Sharman, who wrote, who compiled Panchatantra, in fact. I like how to make making friend, and then the curse of losing friend, and then lust, greed, greed of power, all these things. Shunning power, and then says, No, no, you should not go for rash action. Then he suggests look, loss of gains. How to gain the thing which you have already lost? So these are teachings of good teachers, you know, when we see. And finally, you know, when Radha Krishna introduces this world to the that world in Europe also, there were many takers of Radha Krishna. And then he started introducing, and that, you know, the Prashn which you say, that Prashn is one uh, um, Upanishad. There are, you know, 52 Upanishads, uh, Darashiko translated, and one was Prashn. Prashn is always keep questioning. And that Prashn was about, you know, Vedantic philosophy, and then he says, he cultivates all the meanings in the, through uh, uh, um, Atharveda. So Atharveda, Atharveda is full of questioning, in fact. 
Like why you comes and questions, what is my entity? Then Agni comes, questions, what is my entity? Then air comes, uh, then dust comes and says, what is my entity? And similarly, fire comes and what is my entity? Finally, sky comes, hey, who am I? So all these questions, in fact, and the answer coming out of these questions, in fact, that look, here is ecosystem which will work and man will connect himself to these cosmic challenges. And then finally his researches and look on one hand tradition, on the other hand modernity. When I say that on one hand, Gandhiji saying Khadi, the other, on the other hand, there were a lot of other exponents also and suggesting that look, let us tie up our machine. Let us start thinking in terms of industries, markets, economy. And all these things will go together. And India shall remain alive as long as we keep these traditions intact. And this is the crux of the matter, what Professor Rao is suggesting, but keep on thinking. And now you have, you have a lot of discoveries about the moon, but a poet also says somewhat, you know, I'm, you know, being a student of lit language and literature, I must suggest that you also think about poetry. And that poetry is, na kaha chand to khafa kyu ho? Ab dhara kya hai chand daro mein? So everything is well discovered. But yes, discovery will never end. And ultimately, you have to discover yourself. So once again, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm really grateful. Uh, grateful to Professor Rao for coming here and delivering a wonderful lecture. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are so grateful to you and for the charming kind of speech with a beautiful message. So it's the time to wind up the Teachers' Day celebration 2023 and be thankful for everything happens in our lives. So it's the time for the official vote of thanks. I would like to request Professor Shaheen Sheikh, Head Department of Education Training, for the formal vote of thanks. Professor Shaheen Sheikh, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Sumi. Respected Chief Guest, Honorable VC of University of Hyderabad, Professor B.J. Rao, sir. Honorable, uh, Respected Chairperson, Honorable VC of Manu, Sayyid Anul Hassan, sir, uh, dignitaries on the dais, off the dais, all the faculty, students, uh, Aslam Alaikum. Feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping up a present and not giving it. And so today I stand before you on this Teacher's Day with a heart full of gratitude and a sense of fulfillment. It is an honor and a privilege to propose this vote of thanks on behalf of Manu and School of Education and Training. First and foremost, I would like to extend a humble thanks to the Lord God Almighty, because if he is with us, nobody can be against us, not even the rains, because in spite of the rains, we are all assembled over here and celebrating this Teacher's Day. Uh, thanks also to Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, sir, because he has been a great teacher and it is because of him that today we are able to celebrate Teacher's Day on his birthday. So thanks to Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, sir. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our chief guest, the Honorable VC of University of Hyderabad for his inspiring speech and for enlightening us on the topic of education for all with his scientific viewpoint on human capabilities and how to help students learn and set them on the path for self-learning as well as deep learning. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, a special thanks to VC, sir, for his guidance and support, because it's your guidance and support, sir, that are the driving forces behind our academic excellence. And we are immensely grateful to you for the positive encouragement that you provide us on every occasion. Thank you, sir. Another thanks, it's much due to Registrar Sir, Ishtiaq Ahmed Sir, because Sir's table is usually full of files, 
But in spite of that, you must have noticed that he takes out time to attend all the functions and that too with a smile on his face. So thank you, sir, for coming today also and gracing our function. I also take this opportunity to thank the pillars of strength and support of Manu, that is our OSD one, Professor Shagufta Shaheen, ma'am, and OSD two, Professor Tadiki Muhammad Mahmood, sir, for gracing this occasion and sharing with us the greetings on the Teachers' Day. I take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Ashraf Jaisi, sir, for uh, coming over here and and uh, sharing this platform for the introduction of the student induction program. Thank you, sir. And thank you for that lovely speech also. A very grateful thanks to all the faculty and the organizing committee of School of Education of Training and Department of Education and Training who put in their time and effort and creativity to make this Teacher's Day celebration a memorable one. Your hard work, meticulous planning have really paid off and this event would not have been possible without your efforts and dedication. I would like to uh, place on record a special thanks to Dr. Sumi and uh, Dr. Ashwini for the banner designing and the invitation card designing and uh, Dr. Sumi for her excellent comparing and Dr. Akhtar Parveen ma'am for that comprehensive introduction. Thank you all. A necessary thanks to the IMC, the engineering section, and the estate section for the video coverage and the venue uh, and making this venue uh, possible. Uh, to all the teachers uh, that are present over here, I would like to remind you that you are truly the guiding lights of the student's life and your influences extend beyond the classroom. Last but not the least, a big thank you to all the students who are present today and the staff who have gathered here today to make this event a success in spite of the rains. Your presence has made this day even more memorable. In conclusion, as we wrap up this celebration of Teachers' Day, let us all carry the spirit of gratitude and respect for our teachers with us throughout their lives, throughout our lives. Let us remember that learning is a lifelong journey and our teachers will forever be our guiding stars. Once again, thank you all for being a part of this wonderful celebration. And we look forward to continuing our academic journey with renewed enthusiasm and gratitude. Thank you all and have a great day. Thank you. Uh, one small announcement before that. The Ksharam will start from 3 o'clock uh, here at DD Auditorium. So all the students and teachers are re requested to come over for the program. And uh, one more announcement. Those who uh, want to visit uh, Rao sir, yeah, they are most welcome. Here. Okay. Among the teachers. So here, here sir. Yeah, we have a photograph with Rao sir. All the teachers are requested to come over here for the photograph. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much all the program ends here. And thank you so much all the teaching staff, non-teaching staff, students, scholars, and all those who helped for this program. Thank you. So please stand up for the national anthem. I, am I request IMC team to play the national anthem.
शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन मंगल दायक जय भारत भाग्य विधान the refreshment is waiting outside so students please proceed through the uh, door 